If you were hoping this video would be about the Book of Enoch, then you will be disappointed. Many people like to recommend that we Bible believers stop what we are doing and read books that are not in the Bible. The most recommended of them all is the so-called Book of Enoch. And they will point to a verse in Jude which says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of thee, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. But just because the Bible mentions something that Enoch said, doesn't mean that there was ever a written book of Enoch. You'll notice that Enoch prophesied. It doesn't say that he ever wrote anything. So just because someone saw the completed New Testament, and they saw Enoch's prophecy in it, they decide to invent an entire book and claim that they found it, and it must be an actual book written before the flood. But we true Christians know it's fake because of the numerous errors found in it. According to the so-called Book of Enoch, it says, In the year 500, in the seventh month, on the fourteenth day of the month, in the life of Enoch. But this can't be accurate because if one says that the year 500 is referring to the 500th year after creation, then that's quite the problem because Enoch wasn't alive during the year 500. Enoch wasn't born until the year 622. And it can't be talking about the 500th year of Enoch's life because Enoch only lived 365 years on the earth before God took him to heaven. The so-called Book of Enoch also incorrectly states that Methuselah was born when Enoch was 165 years old. But they messed that up as well because he was just 65, not 165. And that's just two examples of how pathetic this so-called book is. There are many more examples I could give you, but instead of focusing on their inadequacies, I want to tell you why Enoch is important to you. Enoch was caught up to heaven. And therefore, he represents all Christians living in this church age. For example, Enoch gets translated to heaven well before the flood. And the flood was definitely a time of tribulation. Noah and his family inside the ark represent the people that go through a tribulation, but God miraculously preserves them safely through it. This will represent the Jews that finally figure out that the Antichrist is not their Messiah, and so they flee and hide out in caves. Then those verses in Matthew chapter 24 will kick into gear. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. We get our bread with the peril of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness. God will keep those Jews safe during that tribulation called the time of Jacob's trouble. The reason it's called Jacob's trouble is because this isn't the time of the church's trouble. Why? Because the church is no longer there. Just like Enoch wasn't there for the flood, we Bible-believing Christians won't be there for the time of Jacob's trouble either. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. The problem some Christians have with Matthew 24 is they see those people in serious trouble running from the Antichrist, and then they see a rapture, and they assume that it's their rapture, what we call the catching away. The mistake they make is they don't seem to realize that there are two raptures, one for the church and one for tribulation saints. If a Christian can just figure that out, it will save him a lot of confusion. All these years when Christians would debate whether the rapture takes place before the tribulation or near the end of the tribulation, when they should have just been studying the scriptures all along. These two raptures are actually part of an entire resurrection. The first part happened at the cross. This is when Jesus led the Old Testament saints to heaven. It's called Christ the Firstfruits. Our catching away is the main harvest and will include about 2,000 years worth of Christians that have lived and died and some of us will still be alive. 
Then the time of Jacob's trouble, with a small rapture at the point of time for those Jews that have endured to the end. They are what we refer to as the gleanings. For illustration purposes, we'll take this tree for example. We see that for the first time this year we are starting to see fruit. This represents Christ and those Old Testament saints that were waiting for their sacrificial lamb to show up. So those first fruits get picked, but the harvest is still an ongoing thing. You go back later on, and now you are getting what we would call the main part of the harvest. That's where we, the church age, comes in. And we get picked. This is our catching away, but it's not quite over just yet. When you go back one last time to take a look, you'll find a final few pieces of fruit. And these are called the gleanings. And that is the Jewish remnant that endures to the end. This is why they wait until just before the millennium to call these three parts of the harvest finished and the first resurrection. There's no problem here. It's just that people don't always read their Bible. At this point, someone will say, what about Elijah? Didn't he also get carried up to heaven? And you'd be right. He also is a type, but he represents those Jews that are enduring to the end. Enoch represents the Gentiles. I say that because in the church age, we are predominantly Gentile. The Apostle Paul told us that blindness, in part, is happened to Israel. That doesn't mean that a Jew can't get born again today, but it's extremely difficult for them because they don't accept our New Testament. So that makes the average Christian coming out of the former Gentile category. And Enoch is a Gentile. He has to be. He was living in a time when there weren't any Jews on the whole planet. The Jews start with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and technically not even until Jacob's children. Whereas Elijah is a Jew, and he represents the remnant at the end of Jacob's trouble. And our rapture takes place before the gleanings, just as Enoch was caught up before Elijah. Since both Enoch and Elijah have not died, many people think that they will be the two witnesses that show up in the book of Revelation. And they get that from this verse in the Bible. Hebrews 9.27 It is appointed unto men once to die. But that's what we call a general rule. Yes, you have an appointment with death, but God can interrupt that and see to it that you don't keep your appointment. And not everyone will. Just as everyone that is caught up, we ourselves won't have to come back down to earth and die. Lots of people didn't keep their appointment to die once. What about Lazarus? He didn't keep his appointment to die once. Did Jesus foul up by bringing him back to life? No, he didn't. But now Lazarus ends up dying twice. In 2 Kings chapter 13, some bad guys were invading and some Israelites had to bury a dead body real quick, so they hurriedly threw the body onto the bones of Elisha the prophet, and the dead body came back alive. So he didn't make his appointment to die once either. In Luke chapter 7, Jesus interrupts a funeral of the widow's son, and now that guy didn't keep his appointment to die only once. In Acts chapter 9, Peter prays that Dorcas would come back to life, and she does. Now, I'm not going to bother listing all of these, as I'm sure you get the picture by now. Dying once is not a good enough reason to bring Enoch and Elijah back down to earth. What you end up having is three representations. Enoch will represent people that never died. That's the people that are still alive and get caught up to heaven. Elijah will be representing the majority as most people will end up dying once. You say, but Elijah didn't die. How can he represent people that have died once? That's correct for now, but Elijah will come back, and he will get killed by the Antichrist, and that will be the first time he dies. Moses will represent the people that will have died twice, people like Lazarus, and the widow's son, and Dorcas, and the other examples I showed you. And since we know that Moses died in Deuteronomy chapter 34, but later Michael the archangel dug up his body so that he will join Elijah in the future when the two witnesses show up in Revelation chapter 11. And then Moses will have died twice. 
There are other reasons why the two witnesses in the future will be Moses and Elijah, but we're sticking to why it's not going to be Enoch. Keep in mind who their audience will be. The Jews in the tribulation wouldn't listen to some Gentile like Enoch, who's not even circumcised. But they'd sure listen to the representatives of the Mosaic Law and the prophets. Now, before this video comes to an end, I want to mention one more thing about Enoch. I mentioned earlier that people lose their minds trying to find out if he ever wrote anything, when they should be concentrating on what he said. He prophesied that the Lord would come with ten thousands of his saints. And if you are a born-again saved sinner like myself, then congratulations, you're famous. Because Enoch prophesied about you, and he did it over five thousand years ago.